Thank you so much, Radwan. It's such a pleasure to be at the Center for the Study of Islam and Democracy to talk about the Tunisia situation that I have been following from a comparative uh, perspective. And for that purpose, I will like to share with you this um, presentation. Um, sorry, okay. Uh, that has to do with I, what I have been calling the constitutional authoritarian populism. So my purpose here is to analyze Tunisia case from a comparative perspective and then suggest some strategies to protect democracy in Tunisia uh, from the constitutional law and human rights uh, perspective. Uh, not so long ago, democracies used to die in uh, military coups. Uh, however, uh, one of the lessons that uh, brings the 21st century is that democracies can also die in the hands of the constitution. So this is an example of the Venezuelan dictator, Nicolas Maduro, who has been supporting his authoritarian measures in the Venezuelan constitution. So it is not uh, weird in the 21st century that non-democratic regimes use the constitution to cover authoritarian measures. Uh, by the way, there is a very good book, a recent one by Moises Naim, The Revenge of Power, that explained from a political science perspective this uh, topic. So we can, from a comparative perspective, and again, the, the lens of a constitutional uh, law, we can talk about the modern dictator's playbook as master of constitutionalism. Because there is a pattern that several non-democratic governments are following in the 21st century. And that uh, playbook is based on basically four steps. Step number one, the populist rhetoric, us versus them. Us are the people, them are the uh, elites that are hindering the people's right. For instance, it is necessary to protect the people against a corrupt Congress. It is necessary to protect the people against a corrupt judiciary. It is necessary to protect the people against a corrupt media and so on and on. So there is a populist rhetoric that is used to uh, justify an authoritarian pace. Second uh, element in this playbook, constitutional formalities. This populist rhetoric is uh, summarized in constitutional decisions. For instance, the most popular case, emergency decrees or exceptional powers. In order to protect the people against the risk created by the corrupt judiciary, the corrupt Congress, the corrupt media, the president adopts emergency decree to defend the people. Uh, another popular institution here is uh, the constitutional court that uh, because as uh, you known uh, uh, was not applicable, however, in the Tunisia case. So this populist rhetoric uh, justify constitutional decisions that in essence are authoritarian. Why are authoritarian? Due to the concentration of power, the decimation of accountability and human rights violation. So there is a big question here. Why modern dictators love the constitution? And there are two reasons. One is has to do with a uh, political science, and the second one is a, a, a legal reason. From the perspective of the political science, constitutions tend to provide legitimacy to political decisions. The constitution is a source of legitimacy. So claiming that the dictator is acting under the scope of the constitution is a way to reduce the political cost of the authoritarian decision. But second, from a in legal perspective, these constitutional formalities are a shield against international oversight based on the non-intervention principle because modern dictators will claim that 
international organizations such as the United Nations Human Rights Council or the African Court of Human Rights uh, or the European Court of Human Rights, et cetera, et cetera, those international organizations cannot oversight domestic constitutional decisions based on the non-intervention principle. So basically the constitution is used as a shield to provide legitimacy and to reduce the a role and intervention of the international community. And this is exactly what is happening in Tunisia. We can find here the populist rhetoric. President Sayez, as you know, uh, claimed that he was protecting the people from a corrupt system. And as he called the locks in the 2014 constitution, uh, he acts to constitutional emergency decrees. However, uh, through this constitutional emergency decrees, President Sayed exert absolute power and promote a constituent process that didn't follow the 2014 constitutional procedure. And finally, there is now a struggle between President Sayed and the African Court on Human uh, People's Rights because the African Court ruled that uh, beyond the layers of constitutionality, the measures adopted by President Sayed violated human rights. So, uh, and, and of course, the argument of President Sayez is that the African court can not overview domestic decisions adopted uh, under the formalities of constitutional law. So as, as you can see, Tunisia, regrettably, is not an uh, isolated case. Under the contrary, Tunisia is the most recent example of the rise of constitutional of, uh, populist authoritarianism. So to, to, to just to end this brief presentation, how to restore, how to protect democracy uh, in cases such as uh, Tunisia from a constitutional law perspective? Well, there's some uh, lessons that I can uh, bring today taking into consideration other similar cases. Lesson number one, it is necessary to look beyond constitutional formality. Each time that yes. President Sayed claimed the constitutional, the constitutionality of his decision, it is necessary to, to explain why those decisions aren't constitutional. Second, the only constitution in force is the 2014 constitution, period. The new constitution approved by Sayed is not a legitimate text, cannot be deemed or treated as a constitution. Third, register and denounce human rights abuses in order to promote accountability toward the international community. This is a long and winding road, but at the end, it creates favorable incentives for a democratic transition. Uh, fourth, who are the people? It is necessary to rescue the people concept. The people is not a concept that President Sayed can manipulate. The people are defined in Article 3 of the 2014 constitution. The Tunisia people that act through the legitimate representative government and through a referendum. And this moved to the final lessons. Only free and fair elections provide legitimacy. If President Sayed is using the constitution as a way to gain legitimacy and avoid international accountability, therefore, it is necessary to denounce the gross violation of the constitution by President Sayez and the gross violation of human rights in order to advance in an international accountability. So those are my very brief commentaries and I will be happy to talk with you in the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, 